And welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Validate Binary Search Tree. It is a medium. Let's get right into it. Given the root of a binary tree, determine if it is a valid binary search tree. A valid BST is defined as follows. The left subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys less than the node's key. The right subtree of a node contains only nodes with keys greater than the node's key. Both the left and right subtrees must also be binary search trees. So we have sort of this recursive definition here. And if we go to example one, we have the root node two, the left child one, and right child three. And here we output true because the left is less than the root and the right is greater than the root. And notice here it says less than or greater than. It needs to be strictly less than or strictly greater than. It can't be equal to. And example two, we have one, five, three, four, six. The left child is less than the root, so that is valid, but the right four should have been greater than five, but it is less than it, so we output false. Now, this is actually pretty simple and straightforward as long as we know what a binary search tree exactly is. So if you know what binary search is, this is very similar to that. So in a binary search, I would have, say, the following ordered array with indices going from zero to 10, which means I know I have 11 elements. And what I wanna do for this is look for, say, a target. So I'm looking for 11, performing a binary search. The first thing I do is I split that array straight down the middle. So this is where I would be splitting, and I would compare that value with my own. I know that mine is greater than the value that I see here, so I need to look in the right half. That is where my values would be. So when I take this half and I split once again, right down the middle, and I compare once again the value that I'm seeing with the value I have. Mine is less than the middle, so I now need to look into the left of this new half. So what I'm doing is the bounds are getting smaller and smaller every single time. And that's exactly what we're gonna do with a binary search tree. It's the same concept. Instead of an array, we have a tree. And instead of splitting at the midpoints, we sort of split at roots and we're guaranteed that everything to the right of our root node has to be greater than it and everything to the left has to be less than it. Now let's take a look at an example with an actual tree. So I have a tree here and I wanna fill out values to make it valid. So for my very first top root node, what values can I put in here? There's no restriction, so my range can be from negative infinity so negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. There is no bound, no restriction for my first root node. So negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Say I go with 10. So this is my root node. This means that my right child has to be greater than 10. So it can go from 10 all the way to infinity. And same thing for my left, which would range from negative infinity. So negative infinity to 10. It has to be less than 10. So what values can I actually pick? Anything greater than 10, say I go with 20, and anything less than 10, say I go with 4. These are within bounds, so they are valid. Now for the right child of 20, we're going to have a tighter bound this time around because not only does it have to be greater than 10, it now also has to be greater than 20. So here it needs to be from 20 all the way to infinity. These are the values that I can pick between. So I'm going to say this is 40. What about my left child? The left child of 20 has to be less than its root. So it needs to be less than 20. But remember, this all was the right subtree of 10. So it needs to be greater than 10, but less than 20. So the bounds are going to go from 10 to 20. And of course, this is non-inclusive. So these are what my bounds are. I can pick between, I'm going to go with, say, 12. And same on the left side, right? The bounds over here would be from 4 because it is the right child. It needs to be greater than 4, but it still needs to be less than 10. It's still bound by the parent's right bound as well. So we're just making it tighter. Instead of going from negative infinity to 10, it now goes from 4 to 10. So 4 to 10, let's say we go with 6. And same thing over here, the bound, instead of being from negative infinity to 10, it is the left child of 4, so it needs to be from negative infinity to 4, and say we go with 2. So these are my values and bounds, let me also write these out. 
Okay, so I just went ahead and rewrote all of the values with the bounds in place. Now let's take a really quick recap. At the top, we have our root node 10 that falls between negative infinity to positive infinity, so no real bound there. The right child of 10, we know has to be greater than 10. These bounds are not inclusive, so it needs to be greater than 10 and it can go as high as possible. And 20 is valid, it is greater than 10. 10's left child needs to be less than 10, so that is our bound, and 4 is valid. Now, 20's right child, not only does it need to be greater than 10, it also needs to be greater than our own root value, than 20's value. So it needs to be greater than 20, and it is 40 is greater than 20, so this is valid as well. Now, 20's left child, it needs to be less than 20 because it is the left child, but it needs to take into account its own bounds that it gets from 20. It needs to be greater than 10, but less than 20. And 12 falls within that range, so it is good as well. Now four is right. Again, it needs to be greater than four. It is the right child, but it is coming from its own bound, which needs to be less than 10, right? This whole thing is a left subtree of 10. So it needs to be between this range, this bound and six falls between that. So it is valid as well. And over here, four's left child, it needs to be less than 10, but also less than four. So the total bound for that becomes less than four, which it is two is less than four. So this whole tree is valid. Now, what do we notice here, right? Every time we have a child, it's taking the root node as one of its bounds. So the right child of 10 needs to be greater than 10. The right child has its node, parent's node as its left bound. The left child has the parent's node as its right bound. And again here, right? The right child of 20 has 20 as its left bound. It needs to be greater than 20. And the left child of 20 has 20 as its right bound. It can only be as big as 20. Same thing here, we have a root node of four. And if you are the right child, four is your left bound, you have to be greater than four. And if you are the right child, four is your right bound, you need to be less than four. So what we're gonna do is gonna iterate through our entire tree and in order to check validity, we're going to be passing in our root value as one of those bounds and keep the other bounds as is because that's the only one we are getting tighter on. And we're gonna do this for every single node all the way down. And if at any point we break that bound, we know we need to return false. If we've gone through the entire thing and everything is valid, then we would return true that this whole tree is valid. So let's go ahead and code all this up, then run through a super quick example. Now this is a binary search tree and for trees, the best way usually to iterate through is to use a recursive DFS approach. So to do that, I'm actually going to write a helper function first. So this is going to be my helper. And I'm going to take in my root. And what else do I want to take in? I want to pass in the bounds each time. I want to make sure my root value stays within that. So I'm going to be passing in a left and a right bound. Now with a recursive solution, you want two things, the base case and the recursive case. So for the base case, what is base case number one? What happens if the root that I'm passing in doesn't exist? If it's non-existent, it can't be not valid, right? So if root is none, we would return true. And what this means is we've gone through every single node in our tree and we've reached the end. We've gone past the child, past the leaf node. So a leaf node is any node that does not have a left or right child. We've gone past that, which means if we've made it that far, everything we've seen up till now has been valid and we would return true. Now, when do we return false? Well, every time we wanna make a check if our root is within bounds, right? So we wanna see if left is less than our roots value and is our roots value less than right? If this is not true, so if this condition does not hold, then we know we are not within bounds and we would return false. Now we know our root falls between these bounds if it has not exited either of these if conditions. Now we want to check our child nodes. So we want to check both left and right children and see if they both return true. So for that, I am going to say we want to return self.helper on root.left. So I'm calling with my 
left child first. And what are the bounds that I'm passing? I am passing in the same left bound that I have from my parent. So if I'm a left child, I have the same left bound as my parent. So I'm going to be passing in left. The only thing that is changing is the right bound, right? That is going to get tighter and that's going to take our root nodes value, our parents value. So this is going to be root dot bound. This is getting tighter. So if this is true and if my right node is also true, so solve dot helper on root dot right. And what am I passing in for my left bound? If I am a right node, I am getting tighter on my left bound, right? If I am a right node right here, I'm getting tighter on my left bound because there's a new value that I need to be greater than. So I'm going to be passing in root dot val, that parent node, for my left bound. I need to be greater than this new left, and my right can stay what it was from my parent. So that is going to be right, exactly what we're passing in, because this is going to remain unchanged. The right bound remains unchanged. And if both of these return true, then we would output true. If either returns false, we output false because of this and operator right here. And that is our helper function. What are we going to call it with? We pass in the very first node. So we're going to be calling this helper with our root node. So root. And what are my initial left and right bounds? Well, that would just be negative infinity. So negative infinity and float of positive infinity. Let's go ahead and run this code. Long answer. I actually don't have a return here, so let's see if that is the reason. All right, that is accepted, and we can go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted as well. So we're talking about space and time complexity. We are going to be going through every single node. So for time, that would be O of N, because we want to check if every single node is valid. And for space, our recursive call stack could be as big as the number of nodes in our tree. So that is also O of n for space. Now let's super quickly run through a quick example, just so we can see how our code is running line by line. I'm actually going to be taking example two and modifying it just a little bit. So I have the root node five and have one, six, four, three. So let's start at the very beginning and just go through this line by line. The first thing I do is I call my helper function with my root node being passed in. So I'm calling helper with my root node being passed in, negative infinity and positive infinity. These are my left and right bounds. I'm just going to write this out so it's a bit clearer. So I have root being five, left being this and right being this. Now I'm in my helper function and I see if my root is none, I would return true. Root does exist, so it's not none. Now I want to check these bounds. Does my value fall between these bounds? It does. So now I'm going to be calling the helper function again with my left and right child. So what is the left child of my root node 5? Well, that would be 1. So I'm passing this in with 1. And my left would stay negative infinity. That bound stays negative infinity and my right updates to the value of my root so that would be five and I would call the helper again with my right as well so that would be six root dot val so the left bound becomes five and my right bound would stay infinity and since we read left to right we would solve for this first so we're calling helper again with root node one left being negative infinity and right being five now I go into this condition once again, root is not none, and one is between these two bounds. Negative infinity is less than one, and one is less than five. So now I call helper again, passing in my left and right children. So left and right children of one are none, so I'm just going to be passing none in, and the left bound for the theoretical none would be the left, so that would be negative infinity and root dot val, which is one. And I'm passing in with my right, which is also none, root dot val, which is one, and infinity. So reading this left to right, I first call helper with these values. I have root equaling none, left being negative infinity, and right equaling one. Now I'm in this condition, and root is none, so I would return true. So I return true for over here. And I can go and make this call again, but I know this should be returning true because the root would be none. So this would also return true. That means that this whole call 
up until one, this whole thing would be true because we have return true and true. And this call we bubble all the way back up would be true. So the left child would be true. Now we want to call this with our right. So now we want to call it in with six, which would be helper with the root being six, left being five, and right equaling infinity. We go into this helper function and root is not none. And now we want to check the bounds. Is left less than the value, which it is, and is the root value less than the right bound? That it is. So now we're going to be calling our left and right helpers. So I'm going to be calling with my left child. So left child of six is four. The left bound stays what it is over here. So that would be five. And my right bound, what I cannot be greater than, would be my current node's value. So six. So I need to say between five and six. And for my right child, I am passing in my right root node. So that would be three my current value so six i need to be greater than six and my right bound which is infinity i need to be less than infinity so reading left to right again i will be calling with this right over here so i'm calling with my root node being four my left bound being five and my right bound being six i go into this helper root is not none so now i'm in this if condition is my left less than my root value that is not true right left is not less than my right. So I would return false over here. Once I return false, I can actually bubble back up to this caller and say that this is false. At this point, I don't even need to call this helper and have it figure out if it is true or false. I have one false, so that means this whole thing evaluates to false. And I bubble this back up to my caller, which is false. So this whole thing is now false. True and false would equal false. And I would return false because this is not valid. 4 should have been greater than 5 and less than 6. Obviously, this wouldn't be an integer. We can see that this already breaks. But this would be false, and that is what we would return. So this is how we would validate a binary search tree. If you have any questions at all, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time.